Hey y'all, welcome back to Agape Gardens. I'm Carolyn. And this is our video this week on the Every Bit Counts Challenge, sponsored by Three Rivers Homestead. And some of our projects take a longer time, so we're kind of doing it incrementally so that we don't have super long uh, videos for you all. I hope you enjoy. All right, so today's preservation is gonna be a little bit different. We're going to be making chili. And I like to make a big batch of chili. There's only two of us in our home and so I make a big batch and then I freeze it and so I have some peppers in the refrigerator this is a buena mulata that's turned red this is a red pepperoncini this I think is a cross between a banana pepper and a buena mulata so it's also very spicy I have a cubanelle which is like a seasoning pepper a few corbachi peppers which is a sweet pepper and a bell pepper that I'm going to throw in here. I'm also going to throw in some onion. This is a red of Florence. Onion, I don't know these varieties, but we grew all these onions. And I'm going to put in some of our garlic. But everything is not going to be from what we've grown. This is an effort to give myself a prepared meal that is ready to go when I don't have time to cook. Also, I, I should say that every time I make chili, it is a different recipe. Uh, so we're just making, kind of making it up as we go along with some basics. So I'm gonna put a little oil in my Dutch oven, get that going, and start chopping my onions. Okay, so here we've got our onion and our pepper in the Dutch oven. We use some vegetable broth to kind of deglaze, which we'll do that again. The tomatoes will naturally deglaze the pan as long as you run your spoon underneath. I'm gonna put some of this chopped garlic in. I like to put the chopped garlic in last because it has a tendency to burn more quickly. So it doesn't need as long, just about a minute to kind of cook and then we'll start adding our other ingredients. So in this, I'm gonna be adding some homegrown beans that I boiled yesterday. They're already kind of soft, but we're gonna cook them a little bit more in here. I'm gonna be adding Brooks Chili Hot Beans. I don't have to add this, I could just add plain beans and season them, but I do enjoy the flavor of these. It's kind of a Midwestern thing. My mom always used it, so I do too. I'm gonna to be adding kidney beans. I'm gonna be adding some chili powder. This is homegrown poblano peppers. They call them ancho chilies. Once you dry them, they are definitely spicier than your regular chili powder. I'm gonna be adding this dented can of crushed tomatoes some home canned tomato juice with tomato paste to make kind of a tomato sauce. Some parsley, garlic powder, cumin, paprika, all of that's gonna be going in. So I'm gonna get to opening these cans.
Okay, I'm going to add some oregano. I don't really measure very much. I'm going to add some parsley. I'm going to add this roasted garlic. Some paprika. So here is my vegan chili all bagged up ready for the freezer. We had enough for dinner that evening and enough to put two meals away in the freezer. This is one of the ways I really really like to set aside food especially for the seasons where I'm very busy like going back to school or preservation season. That way we can just pull a meal out of the freezer and enjoy a home cooked meal while uh, we are doing the things keeping us busy. Okay, so for today's preservation project, I have some celery out in the garden that is desperately needing to be harvested. I'm gonna blanch and freeze most of that for our use in soups and chilies and casseroles and other cooked items. I don't know if you all can see that very well. There are a bunch of ants all through here. The softest, the center is soft. So that makes me think it's not gonna grow back. I was gonna try and trim around and see if uh, the celery would grow more leaves. That's what I did with the ones in the bed. So that might be our experiment. And uh, I might just have to take all of these. I had no idea that ants like celery so much. Okay, so I still have one celery plant here. And I'm leaving quite a bit of this one just to see. I do have a couple more at the end of this row, but, but right now I have a basket to deal with and my bowl inside, so I'm gonna get in on that. So I have my trusty potato brush here to try and clean off some of the celery. This is one of my most used kitchen tools are great for obviously scrubbing potatoes but any root vegetable carrots beets turnips anything like that and sometimes the stalks of things like Swiss chard or this celery because the ants were bringing up soil in between these celery stalks and I don't know if that's normal or not but it made this celery a little bit dirty and so I just wanted to scrub them off and then I want to go ahead and cut off all of the leaves some of the leaves are in good enough condition as you can probably tell this celery was in the garden a little bit too long and so some of the leaves are in better condition than others but the ones that are in pretty good condition i am going to put on the dehydrator and use those either as like a part of uh, sorry celery flake or grind them up into a powder maybe make some celery salt or something like that so i'm just brushing these up and getting them cleaned up and ready to chop before we blanch them. I'm really, really glad that I tried growing celery. It was way easier than I thought it would be. Okay, so we have this big bowl full of our celery. Some of these are very small. I'm okay with that. I am not a celery farmer. Uh, this is just one package of seeds um, that I decided to try it out. So I'm very excited to have this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blanch this celery for three minutes. So I've got my water boiling. I'm gonna get a bowl of ice water out and we're gonna put it in, let it boil for three minutes, take it out, put it into the ice water and then we'll be able to package it up to stay. I did get my chopper out, my Vidalia onion chopper because I thought I might use this, but I'm not sure now since these are so small, I might just slice them. I do also have celery leaves there, celery leaves here. I'm gonna look this up. I think I can blanch these maybe for a minute or so and then put them on the dehydrator and maybe make a powder. I tried to pull out any of the not so great looking leaves. 
some of them are not perfect and not interested in perfection I also still have to wash these just remember the garden food is dirty and uh, has live living things I've already put one spider outside I see another little guy crawling there I'm gonna put him outside and get going one thing I have noticed about this celery when I have cooked with it fresh it is a little bit more fibrous than the celery I have purchased at the store before and so I'm kind of trying to make the pieces ones that seem like they would cook down in a reasonable amount of time um, I don't know if this happened because I didn't blanch my celery by wrapping it in something so that it would be lighter in color but that's definitely something I'm gonna look into next year when I grow celery if blanching might make it less fibrous and sweeter Okay, so now we will wait for the celery to return to a boil and it's starting to go. And we'll time that for three minutes. And then we'll put it in our bowl of cold water. Okay, so that's three minutes of blanching. We're gonna go ahead and remove our celery from our boiling water, put it into our cold water. To stop the cooking process. So whenever you're blanching, you definitely wanna make sure that you have cool water to stop that cooking process. This batch, I didn't have ice in it first and it was taking a really long time to cool down those celery. So make sure that you put some ice into your cold water and then here I am using again the salad spinner to get the moisture off of my vegetables this is my least favorite salad spinner I think this one is by Tupperware and the top of it is just really not easy to use and then of course in a freezer bag into the freezer with what it is and the date those are so important in being able to use your products so here we are with our two quart bags full of celery it sure looked like a lot more in the garden basket but that's okay homegrown celery this is not only a great way to preserve your celery this is also like food prep so if you think like you're gonna make some red beans and rice you need the holy trinity right onion celery bell pepper if you've grown your celery and frozen it you don't have to chop any celery same with the onions. If you've got frozen chopped onions and frozen chopped bell peppers, all you have to do is throw them in the pan. Anytime you're gonna cook anything, it's gonna lose some of its texture from when it was raw, but it's going to lose that anyway if you're cooking. And so having those frozen vegetables prepared is a huge time saver when you're trying to throw together a meal. The Every Bit Counts Challenge, it is stretching me more than I realized, not only because I'm picking up the camera every day, but also I'm preserving something every single day. It's easy to push to the side during this busy time of year. However, I'm going to be so grateful that I have all of this food preserved and that the harvest that I've worked so hard for is not going to waste. So I encourage you all to preserve something in whatever way makes sense to you. If you're participating in the Every Bit Counts Challenge, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you're preserving. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time.